So my name is Adam, and this will be a mostly discussion about modularity, and there'll be a short intro to just keep everyone on the same page, and then we can discuss various problems, mostly like what should we modularize, what should we modularize, um, what is it useful for, etc. So. Who knows modularity? Who heard about modularity before? Um, almost everyone. That's that's good. Okay, so modularity is something regarding multiple versions of applications. That's probably true, right? Um, and yes, it is. This is the basics. But then there's the other question: if it solves all the multiple version problems, um, and that's where we have some confusion because the answer is definitely no, not really. Um, there are things that you could do before regarding multiple versions that you can do now. It helps with some things that you couldn't do before, but there are also cases that you could do without modularity, but modularity doesn't really help you. Um, and we'll dig into those. So let's have a quick recap first um, before we start discussing like about the modularity concepts, what it is. So who heard about streams? Streams, of course. So, just to recap, just to put it super simple, like if I have Fedora releases and there are some packages, if I want to modularize something, if I want to modularize the language, what happens is that just like there's some this envelope around the package of language, and that's it. It's built a little bit differently. Um, it's consumed. It can be consumed very similar way, but that's basically all the difference. But this isn't why we made it, right? We made it before because we want to have multiple versions. Um, so there are two versions of the language. I still have the two versions of the language, but I can build both for both Fedora releases. So there's more flexibility what version you want to have. Um, and you don't need to really care about like, what Fedora release you have because it's available for both. Um, and there's this space called length because we have the length modules. And you can think about it as just one slot on your system for every module. So you can't install both, right? You can only install one version at the same time. Um, so this is streams. I don't think that's new. Um, who heard about stream expansion? OK, three people. Um, so stream expansion is something. Um, how do we deal with multiple versions of dependencies, mostly? So. Imagine I have two language streams, the same ones we had before, and I have two applications, and both applications can work with both languages. Um, I can say that I just want to build this, and it somehow expands, and that's what happens with the binaries. I end up with four binaries of the app, and for each language I get two, so I can basically deploy both combinations on my system. And this is the way how I can deal with switching the languages, but keeping the version of the application. Like That's how we can do it. It switches the binary, but the application version stays the same. Um, and I know this is a little bit confusing, but you can also look at it from the other side. So you can say that I have two versions of applications that are compatible both with two languages. So that's basically stream expansion. Um, and then I've already probably mentioned this, but no parallel installation. So that's the same picture we saw. I can only install one stream of language onto a given system. Um, and that was basically the basics of modularity, like really high, high level. Um, and now I have some examples. I have three examples of packages that we can look if modularity can help or not. So because modularity is still in progress, like, a lot of things have been already completed, but not everything has been done. So I'll be looking if, it's, if it helps right now, and if it helps by design, which means like when all the features are completed. Um, so the first one is DWM. Anyone knows DWM, by the way? Um, cool. Um, it's a window manager. It's just like, it, it, it's a package that nothing depends on. So. It's just an application, and like we can see if it modularizes, right? Um, the answer is yes. It, it does by design, it does right now, because you can just put it in the envelope, 
build it, even in multiple versions, and it's available in Fedora now. I think we have like four streams, four versions available. You can install it, consume it by the same way you did before. This is the most simple example. Um, okay, Node.js, um, it's a language, it's an interpreted language. Um, there are also multiple versions, but some applications might require it at build time or runtime. And I have the same question if it will work fine. Um, okay, the answer is current state almost, and by design, yes. Why I say almost? So, if something requires Node.js at build time, which is not a module, that's a problem right now. Um, but by the modular design, if you have a Node.js, and if you have a default stream of Node.js, I don't think I've mentioned default streams. Who knows about default streams? Okay, almost everyone, cool. So if you have a module stream as a default stream, it behaves as a normal package, so you shouldn't see a difference. And, but there's a difference now in the build route. It's not visible, so that's why I'm saying it's almost. How we got around, um, how we basically work around this, that we built also Node.js as standalone packages. Um, Steven did that. So that works. So there are still some things that need to be coming. Um, and the last example, I couldn't think about anything specific, but it's a library that changes very really rapidly. And application need to adapt, right, to it. And they don't do it at the same time. So you will need multiple versions of the library on the system at the same time. So, again. Oh, do you have examples? Get 2, which is the one that caused a whole lot of problems yeah. in the door very recently. And uh, ICU. Yeah, the ICU code. And ICU. Okay, so let's get to an ICU. Two examples of this. And the answer is no and no. Um, Modularity doesn't really deal with parallel installation, but there are existing mechanisms that we can still use. Compact packages, for example. Um, it doesn't make sense to put them in streams because we couldn't install them parallel, but yeah. So this is something that Modularity doesn't address, but it's been addressed way before and we don't have to solve it again, um, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah? Can you expand on that? I can. Yeah. Um, um, so, who heard about compact packages? That might be a good question to ask. All right, just a few people. All right, sorry about that. So, in Fedora or in any RPM distribution, how it works is that RPM packages and each RPM name can be present only once on your system. And if you have multiple versions and you do update, it gets the latest version that's possible. Not, that's not true. And, okay, there are exceptions like the kernel package, for no, example. No, if you that's mean. not true. If you are speaking about RPM, then you can have multiple. Okay, so how Fedora works? That's in general practice. In general practice, the, yes. Okay, the, package, that's the package manager is something different. So that now you are talking on the okay. DNF level, but not on the market. Okay, so technically, with DNF, with Fedora, how it's done now, in the most common sense, we get one package at the same time. There are special cases, but there are very special cases. It's, 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 it's more importantly, it, it doesn't it doesn't actually matter how the RPMs are distributed or anything else. Yeah. You can only have one copy of the same library that the rest of the system is aware of because it does dynamic lookup of the libraries on the system. Fair so right. if, yeah. if you don't change the names of them, it gets confused. Yeah. So yeah, like if, if you have a file in your system, it can be just that once in the path, right? If it doesn't do the version. So, but there are the libraries that need to be there in multiple versions. So what happens? So you can rename the file, so it's a different file name, so it exists at the same time. But you also need to rename the package. So what people do, they would either put the version into the package name and maybe attach the word compat as to compatibility. And there are ways how to deal with this. But you need to basically change the name of the package and change the name of the files. So that's how you can install multiple versions at the next to each other. Um, and this is something that modularity doesn't address because modularity deals with alternatives, basically. So if I show the slide that we have there, um, I can choose language one or language two, and I want them to behave the same. I want to have the same executable, for example, on the system. I just want to choose the version. I don't want to change the packages in a way that they will install somewhere else. 
like for example with software collections or other mechanisms that can mangle that, right? So whenever I don't want to change the package and want to have multiple alternatives, modularity is the, could be the good solution, but when I need other hacks, it basically doesn't help, if that makes sense. Okay, so there's an idea if we should introduce the concept of compact modules. Um, like if the goal I don't is think that that really makes sense. Uh, we, there's a, it's a perfectly reasonable thing to include compact packages within a module stream, uh, but I, I, think they can, I think you really only need compatibility at the RPM layer. I think moving that to the module layer is... But as the assume that uh, I have a pair of libraries which are tightly coupled to each other. They should and, be uh, But I, I want the same use case, like to install uh, two versions of this library on the system at the same time, but these are, each of those uh, the libraries is actually the bundle or we can in another package. So, so I have one, a group of packages which work together and I want two groups to be installed at the same time. Then it will come to compact module. Sure, but again, I, I still think that yeah, you'd implement that on the pack on the RPM side where each module would carry module A would carry depend uh, carry dependency A dot SO dot SO dot one and module B would carry dependency A dot SO dot two. So what I think is going on here is that um, if I have when I have modules, um, I have only one package language one, but they can have multiple packages in them and what modules can also represent is like an application language runtime and they can help you with installation as well like if you have multiple packages that from an application you can even have multiple ways how to install the application like a minimal installation or additional features or a database server client so you can basically group <coughs> multiple packages in one module and use it as an envelope and you can go to the application and that's basically what you want to do but you want to have those two versions at the same time, right? You want to have like the envelope feature, but you want the parallel installation. Um, so for that, we can do something like this, and we're already doing it with Python, for example, which is a little bit an edge case, but basically we have Python modules that are called Python version, like Python 3.6, Python 3.7, and because there are different module names, that contain RPM with different RPM names, that contain file with different file names, they don't collide. So you, you can basically do that. So this is like a compact module. I don't want to say that because that might stick. But yeah, you can, you can basically engineer. Yeah, so, so you just uh, process yeah. this uh, difference of, from, from a top level of module name mm -hmm. to the entire set of packages which are included yes. in the module. Yeah. And, and like to the set of files. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's a, it's a similar concept to RPMs, like whatever is the name, you can have it only once on your system. So you can have one RPM name on the system, one module name on the system. But yeah, if you make sure that like there's no collisions, you can definitely do that. So what is the advantage of like, having the Python like this and doing like the, like the old, so, like, just parallel install, like having the Python to sell like the six? So we actually from this that with Python. Just as we said, uh, they, we actually do have modules that are, the module name is Python 2.6 and Python 2.7, and then Python 3.6 and 3.7 and 3.8, and those are actually parallel installed modules. Yeah, the stream. And you have a situation like having it in the stream or having it as a parallel install like the Python? It's a, it's so Python, it's Python, Python is, one of the, uh, is one of the very special cases. It's a module for, uh, more, more for political reasons than it is for technical ones, although uh, there are a few technical advantages, but it is still parallel installable. It's, it, it's kind of a workaround. Because it's, it, it, Python was a, very, was a very odd pace that uh, kind of broke the, uh, some of the assumptions, so we figured out that we got uh, a hack around for it. And there might be user benefits and package benefits in packaging something arbitrary into a module. And even the example I had, like there would be just one stream. You can benefit from that from a packager perspective is that you can 
instead of building all the packages individually, submitting individual builds, every single package for every single federal release, we can submit the module just once. Just a module build, and we have a system that will orchestrate the builds for you. And we even have a way how to describe build order, for example. So like, it might be easier for you to describe your application in this way than having it just rebuilt by one command. And we even have some like a lot of things in there that if you update one package, you can only build the one package, and things like this. They're not super advanced, but like basic stuff you can do. So that's like the package of benefits. That if, if, if you're interested about, you can use that. The user benefits are if the application is, for example, more complex and it has like know, 50 packages, and you don't want to people, you don't want people to figure out like what the individual packages are. Like for example, I like the database example. If you have a database with multiple packages, and you can have so, so, some sort of profiles, installation profiles, you can install the database as a server or as a client and it will pick the right packages for it. Or you can install both. So like, that's from the user experience perspective. And then, from the packaging perspective as well, like when I talked about the stream expansion, um, like this, um, if, if it's a language, you can let people stream expand on that on the language. Like, they can build modules on top of other modules, so that may be easier for them to manage as well. Mostly the orchestrating part for the builds and the user experience. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, by the way, I've run out of my slide deck. Um, I just wanted to basically walk through these examples and make sure that like everyone is kind of on the same page. And there were, I don't want to say fires, maybe there were fires um, in the graph with like misunderstandings, how to use modules, and some people were maybe trying to modularize this example, which, and then saying like, modularity is broken, which is not. It's just haven't been architected for this. So like, if you have any um, questions, problems, or maybe topics to discuss, then um, we can all learn and maybe take notes and make sure the documentation is right, or that would do things, um, that everything is just like good. That might be useful also to explain that we did, uh, we did we, this was not uh, just uh, that we didn't design it that way, so we explicitly chose that that was not a problem we wanted much better to solve. That's a good point, yeah. Yeah, that was, this is, yeah, this is by design because we don't want to re implement things. Um, if your goal is, well, we, only, we only want to implement something. We only want to implement things that were not possible easily before, yeah. right? But for parallel installation, then, existing ways, like the compact packages, or containers, or other ways how you can achieve that. We don't want to reinvent re containers or something, right? Um, we just want to make it easy to pick the alternatives, which was which was the most desired use case for like an enterprise world, where you have one application running in one user space, and you don't need multiple versions in there. Okay, some of this I, is, yeah. is some of the <coughs> lessons learned from uh, software collections. Uh, but it, but Red Hat and uh, RHEL uh, implemented software collections. It pulled all, uh, it pulled the users uh, over time, and uh, to find out how they were using it. And they really liked the concept of being able to install, you know, it, having available a variety of different versions of things to install, to install different MongoDB, different Python, etc. But they really didn't like the way SCLs forced them to figure to install stuff in alternate locations and rewrite. They had to rewrite their software to find the USCL locations. Mm -hmm. So, and, and what it turned out is that they were almost never using the parallel installability feature of SCL anyway. They were generally creating containers or or, or VM hosts that had picked one and just used it. They weren't using two, two or three different versions in most cases. So when we started to design modularity, we expressly took that requirement out of it, which simplified a great many things. Because in modularity, we can just, similar to the old alternatives in my mechanism, we just slap things into their standard location, and any existing software that you, that you built on top of that doesn't need to be modified. So that, that was a very conscious choice, not to support parallel installation directly <laughs> natively in modularity. Um, before I get to your question, which I will immediately, I, I see like some people look. I, I don't know. This is not like super entertaining talk. This was meant to be a discussion, 
And if you just came to learn about modularity and, and you want to leave, and I won't be offended. But if you want to contribute to the discussion, let's do that. That's fine. Yeah, by true. Steven. <laughs> <laughs> so I just like, I don't want to hold you here by course if it's interesting for you, if you just like want to learn. Um, and we have other sessions, like right after this one will be a session by Melanie, um who's right there, who will teach you how to build modules. And we'll have one more, I think, tomorrow or Sunday. Work it's in the schedule. Yeah. It's like a two and a half hour birds over feather discussion that will be actually actively solving problems. So this is like this one is aimed for like larger audiences to learn just to um, figure out things. But later though, in much more focused group, they will actually implement fixes maybe. Um, okay. So, so I just yeah, want to shift the topic a bit because uh -huh. from my point of view, the use case is huge. First, a bit uh, all valid and reasonable, and it sounds like you know, we solving the problem which we chose to solve, not, not just all the problems in the world. Mm -hmm. But my concern with modularity lies between the concept uh, of API packages and non-API packages of a module. So mm -hmm. I think this is uh, the root of our problems with modularity right now, because uh, like I don't know if you need to describe what, what this means yet. So, uh, in a module, you can uh, use many packages, and you can choose which packages you consider to be your public interface of the module, the things which you provide by this module, and which packages you just use in, as a part of this module, but only to build this module, mm -hmm. to, to make it work. So you don't expect users to uh, use the, the non-API packages from your module in any other way, only just the module should be. Mm -hmm. Basically, you don't support any other users of this thing. I think there's a lot of misunderstanding yeah. about API, and I can sum it up. Um, so, yeah, um, if you have a module with multiple packages, and the module has a stream, and I have, for example, the language one, language two, and if you choose language one and you do updates, you will get the latest version one, but you won't be switched to the version two. This is for compatibility reasons, and the compatibility is defined somehow. And if for some reason there are multiple packages like language one and something that the language one uses, we can express that the compatibility is only in the language one package. So the other one can get changed, maybe even randomly, and you shouldn't expect it to not to change because we define the guarantee in the language package. So that's, that's the API. Uh, that's actually not entirely accurate. She was correct. Um, Okay, so <laughs> so even like we can yeah, okay, so <laughs> so, so the other uh -huh. the other aspect of the API field is expressly to describe to your uh, to uh, your user community that we only uh, you know we only all these other components that are part of it are supported insofar as they uh, implement that insofar insofar as they support this package. If you have other problems. I, either I can't or won't maintain it for that because I don't have that expertise. I, you know, I pulled this in because it's a tendency and nobody else was maintaining it in Fedora. So I'm going to say, I'm putting it in this, in this module stream, it's just for my module. If it needs to be used from other, for more than one uh, module, that at that point, those two, the two module authors need to, describe, to decide where they're going to put it. Are they going to uh, maintain it fully and move it into Fedora, into a non-module Fedora, or are they going to put it into a special module stream that, that both of their modules depend on so that it can, stay, it can remain limited in its scope? So uh, you know, that, that is a problem that needs to be sorted out between the module authors, and it, and it, and it is a known issue. But this is basically a thing It is an issue, because um, okay. Okay. From, from my, my Understanding this API and non API difference only is stored in, like, in module metadata. And when we use modules, we basically don't see it uh, in any way from the interface, mm -hmm. from the, how you operate with packages. You don't need to know oh, what's the, what this package is. Like, you do. You do. You see it in DNF info. I mean, just like, I mean, sure, you have to go look for it a bit, but the, the information of what RPMs are part of the API is available um, to a consumer the module. So if I'm uh, using DNF info on a package, uh, it marks that this is non API package on the module. Sorry, DNF module info. D you have to look at the module itself. And yeah. say, these packages are API. Yeah, if, if I look at the module. Actually, I think she's right. I think it doesn't ex 
expressly say which packages you have installed in the system that aren't API that issue this module, which is probably a UI, a UX thing you should fix. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, although in a sense you don't care, right? Uh, what you want to know is yeah. that the, the use case, for example, I have a couple of models installed on my system, and now I start to work on my other project, which uh, I'm like, doing my, my personal application with some dependencies. And so, uh, because these non-API packages are uh, put in the same namespace as any other packages, I don't get any alerts that I'm using a non-API package for my work. I just didn't, don't notice it. It's just available in my system, and I implicitly start to use it, and no one tells me that I'm doing something wrong here. I need to mm -hmm. uh, learn about it, that, that this is a problem, and that I need to go to maintainer, that I need to figure out that we need to take this package to the API level or to another module or to base system. Because otherwise it's just implicitly available and I use it as implicitly available. So basically what you're describing is exactly the problem of like rel optional, right? Is that, you know, we've had this, we, we probably, from a UX perspective, we probably should warn somehow, right, that, that these things are, you know, less supported, whatever that means. Well, well, Let's not track okay. rel in this. This is no. I'm saying it's in the metaphor okay. that it's yeah, not, the, the it's rel isn't the module okay. Okay. That is a That is 100 percent why yeah. optional kept getting used, and everyone thought it was supported because okay. of this exact scenario. It's but, the same exact problem. But if you've been on Matthew Miller's talk in the morning, he was talking about people, someone packaging a new application in Fedora and like 300 packages dependencies that they don't want to maintain yeah. for everyone. And this is basically it. Like without modularity that was a problem. With modularity that is still a problem. It's, it's a, a different, different implementation. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so we there's at least a field that you can define like these packages. And you're right, we need better than that on which one say I was thinking maybe we need a different namespace. The, well the other thing about yeah. the other thing about this is that it's mostly only a problem in default streams. Uh, yes. Because for non false if for not, you know, if, if it's in a non false stream, it just yeah. simply uh, doesn't appear unless you have enabled it. Well, if you install it, though. Anyway, yeah. if I enable the stream, uh, a non default stream, I also get my namespace of packages yes. with the package. Yeah. Right. And then I didn't know that it's a non package I shouldn't rely on. So I don't have a differentiation between reliable packages and non reliable packages. So, I mean, we have, we have this problem with size modules, too, right? And you also have this problem with copper. For example, right? It's now you know you're accidentally using some library out of copper um, that you know you thought was all coming from mainline Fedora, right? I mean, yeah. so we have this problem kind of across the board. Yeah, yeah but with, with copper, I can look. I, I do reviews on in mock environment with no dependencies installed, and I get the point of it. Like I forgot to install something, but with modules, I get it installed. Because Only with default. But yeah. I, I get it installed as a part of a module, but I just uh, right. don't know that it's not a, the one I, I should have used. Yeah, with coppers you can yeah. also see like from which yeah. repo it came, so like you can see how track it. It's, it's, it's possible. Possible. Yeah. Yeah. Would you mind filing an issue in our uh, modularity? Yeah, mm -hmm. actually it's the same, or it was the same problem for software collections. Because right. once yeah. you enable software collection, you enable all the libraries and you don't know what is the support level for the libraries you have on the system. Yeah. There's no difference. But you enable, you enable everything from the collection. Yeah. 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 But yeah, if there probably are UX things we can, that we can do because we do have that metadata that we have uh, mm -hmm. in terms of software collections or our right. offers. We probably could have DNF at least say, hey, uh, you know, at the bottom of this uh, transaction where you can guess, you know, the following you're installing the following packages which are intended, uh, which are uh, of limited uh, general purpose. Yeah, yeah. They're, 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 support, they're not supported for general purposes. But the, the, the second aspect of the same problem is uh, that we kind of uh, don't rate the level of maintainership in Fedora, like what Java packages already told us. <laughs> like uh, uh, we uh, say that this package is maintained as a part of the default stream, but it's actually, this means this package is not maintained. If it's a non-API package of the default stream, that means this means we, we have an empty slot in Fedora for this package. Yeah, so we should. I, I, think there's a, I, think there's a, I think there's a good, strong argument that uh, that any uh, that uh, default streams may only carry API packages. Mm -hmm. no, no. And, and so that if you, might, that if you absolutely don't want to maintain it, you may not be a default.
default stream even if it's not going to be like, updated. So default stream cannot expose non-API, cannot contain non-API type. I think that's because good for the Now you need like binary packages. I mean, we are going to have some build-only stuff that yeah. may yeah. like yeah. have to you know, pull things in just with a little bit of that. Don't, don't install. So Whatever you install yeah. from a default I think, think this could be a good uh, actually solution for the main problem we have right now. Yeah. And, but also, we need to add this to our communication. But like, yeah, uh, you can call yourself a maintainer of, of something in Fedora, but <laughs> if you maintain it in only non-API way, it's like it's not a full maintainership. Yeah. So it's something different, and we need to uh, differentiate the status of ma maintainers because if you if you maintainer a proper package and if you maintainer a non-API package, which is for something, it's a lot of different level, a yeah, different level of commitment. So I should take some notes on that during the. Uh, 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 that exact concept during uh, the Matthew's talk or, uh, mm -hmm. earlier, and I think one of the things we might want to uh, do is uh, create a fake fast account that is essentially semi that's maintained on the trip and get that. Well, that, and if, if that is the main uh, right. sign, yeah, may, we maybe create a mod module maintainer as a status is also a good thing right. well, to think about. It. Yeah. yeah, exactly how to do it, but I think we probably want to encapsulate in the actual uh, database that these are not full. That it's, that we know that it's whoever that the person who is doing the build is not a real maintainer, which is happening. It might be happening now with packages, but like this will be much more transparent. Yeah, and I mean, I'm talking about the package. Too, yeah. I, I'm yeah. also thinking of like our message to new contributors, where we need to like tell them like that we are actually looking for maintainer of a package, even though it's existing mm -hmm. in our model of record. We are actually looking for a proper maintainer of a package, and if you have these pair cycles, we need to advertise this possibility to take this name to the proper Fedora repository because it's, it's, yeah. we need you. We so need this you. is a really good discussion, and I think we're now solving a problem in a really good way. So if you could please take a note to open the yeah. issue, and maybe if you want to come to the ball mm -hmm. to maybe discuss it much deeper, yeah. um, that would be great. And yeah, that's definitely, like we have some of the data in there, but exposing it Definitely, and the policy proposal for not including non API mm -hmm. package in the posting is also something that I see as well. Yeah. And yeah, I don't want to shut you down, but I also want to give a little bit of space and then we can focus more. So, about you just, you just comment um, about the uh, thing that we need to store this information somewhere. Uh, I just. Both. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Is there a I don't know if it's really a project is there a way to deliver an uh, automatic dependency expression that happen with the word variety? Because I think it would be <coughs> such an issue when the module uh, dependency uh, mm -hmm. are extracted and they somehow interfere with the normal attack attach dependency. So if there are, mm -hmm. the automatic dependency, uh, happen dependency was zero. So maybe it would be, or maybe, maybe some kind of right. next space. I think what you want to say, I'm letting you do context if it helps. Yeah. Um, how module works? If you, for example, enable this module, I want to install the language to package. It happens into into stage, into stages. So like all of the packages, let's say, are in one repo. Okay, the package one, language one, language two. So first step is that you enabling the language stream two module. So, what happens, you have a pool of packages, all the non-module packages, you start with those, and then you take all the packages from the enabled modules, and basically put them on top of it, you might replace some packages from the module. And then you have a limited set, so you only have limited set of this package one, language two, and nothing else in this case. And then a standard RPM transaction happens. So this is, it looks, um, it works somehow like repository, so like the modules basically limit the content set that you do with dependency resolution in, and then do the dependency resolution. So that's how it works. And does it help with the question? A little bit? Or it's like it's like the entry writing CI that just tries to enable each module stream and make sure that it's repo closure. That's, that, that's doable. Oh. We can do it. <laughs> yeah, because we can do that. As a, as a side of the question, was um, so say that the question was, is there a way to have some new space to be sure that? Because I think you explained the things from the modulated point of view, where you explained how the model works, mm -hmm. but, um, not from the 
non-proprietary point of view where uh, we experience at the time where a non-modular package yes. and a non-modular set of package that is installed on the given system that can happen. still interfere with the repository because they are available. Yeah, so I would say that within the distribution, we should make sure that the distribution is somehow consistent or somehow that well, in the even, way that even the not person, the distribution is not consistent. There are plenty of packages that can. No, like yeah, like like so. it makes sure like it's all broken, right? But exactly as Stephen says, like even in Fedora, you can't install every single package because they would collide. There are alternatives, in a sense, like multiple packages provide the same file, for example, in different implementations or whatever, right? So this can happen, and we should make sure that it's not broken, right? Like it. it you even have choices like if you install something and you can't then install something else. That's completely normal. That happens with non-modular system the same way as it can happen with a modular system. So looking at this from the project level, that's one step. But then we can have third-party repos like RPM Fusion or whatever that basically can interfere with your system. And I mean, you can have a repo that just breaks your system completely and have no control about that. So, like, it's a, it's not a new problem, but call that updates testing. Just call that updates testing. Um, just to 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 take an example of mm -hmm. some time ago, we had a, a library called the type where right? we had to build one. Some patterns uh, elemental features. Mm -hmm. uh, we had that example that we don't want to force this library on users that don't want. The patented tablet version, and that's the reason why we disabled automatic dependency on this library. Uh, so it's kind of the same issue. We don't want to. Uh, yes. But that sounds to me like you're trying to second guess the uh, actor's decisions as well. Yeah, that's so. And that's that's a that to me is something you should file as a bug against the package, not that uh, I expect to be part of much better. Yeah, I think we could have taken another example. But, uh, what I mean is not related to our confusion in the case. And, and I think it's a. The other idea I was trying to explain is that maybe there is a need to have. I think the Python uh, example was interesting because with Python, you have some kind of dedicated system linker for a given. Python version. And um, what I think is interesting uh, would be to have some kind of namespace uh, linker for a given modularity. So I think this is this is solving a little different problem. Like, yes. What should I say? But there is a about dependency counterpart. Right. No, I get that. But like, as I on the, let me just switch the slide. Like. When I said that modularity doesn't solve all the parallel installation, like all the multiple versions problem, this might be one of them. Like modularity is, it, it feels like a big project and there were a lot of technical changes to make it happen because it's kind of complex, but the concept is very simple. It's just people maybe expect more of it than it actually is. It's basically putting packages into an envelope and have alternative strings. Basically nothing else, you don't want to at a fundamental level, it's basically like enabling a, 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 enabling a repo for application, effectively, and then with the semantic that just says that they collide with anything that's already there, it wins. Yeah. That's pretty much, at its most basic, what modular is just needed. It's just an extra repo. And we're not influencing the dependency of a solution and nothing. Yeah, this is that basically that extra sugar on top. Yeah. Because we could, we could have done that with repos, but then imagine that you would have so many repos on your system that it would be hard to manage. And also, a repo is not a, an application. A repo represents a, like a vendor or third party or some, some entity and their software, like Fedora repo, RP Fusion repo, and they have lots of applications in them, right? So it's like repos within repos. That is also one concept how to think about it. And also, if you have those dependencies, um, like the stream expansion, for example, like if I want to have an application to work against these two, but for example, the stream one might not work with stream one of this. Like you can describe this, you can describe it both for the user, so only the right things can happen for the user, and you can also describe it in the built infrastructure. That like this is all built automatically, and from the build side, it's mostly most of this image. Like 
it just like explodes automatically. But if it knows, if you define that, for example, this language screen doesn't run this application, it only goes three automatically for you. So yeah, it's basically just repos with a lot of automation and other things and user experience things in them. And yeah. But no dependency resolution innovations or anything like that. Or no RPM changes per se. The RPM packages are the same. One, one, one tag, speed. one additional tag. One additional tag, but that's an implementation detail. So yeah, that's that a really nice problem to solve. And I think that's you will solve it the same way with and without modularization. Like you can have two streams, one module or two repos with the same package. Like it, it's a conceptual problem that you can solve outside of the it makes sense. And I don't wanna I, I don't wanna Say like this is my problem. Just solve it somewhere else, right? I don't want to say I, I, I want. I'm, it. I'm okay, <laughs> all right. So, so that was Stephen. Then um, okay, I'm basically saying it, but I'm trying to look um, so great to approach it too much. But yeah, having independent life cycles for the modules, like independent from the release, that was one of the goals. They don't implement it somehow. Yeah. So like in the other it's always the whole release and maybe other ones. Mm -hmm. runs. Yeah. <laughs> but basically, you, you know, you can rely on it being, you know, the, kind of the third that release, right? But then not you won't necessarily have it for the next release. Yeah. You can look at the next release if it's there, if it's there, if it's not there, it's not there. That's the best way to find right now, and they should be. Well, at least on the plus side, trying to do a distribution upgrade between them and stop you as well. That's true, yeah. You try to just make this up, you know, uh, DNF uh, uh, system upgrade uh, from 30 to 31. Uh, during that rest of that resolution, you say, you say, oh, the Node.js colon uh, uh, stream is no longer available. It's just some confusing the upgrade. Mm -hmm. So you have to decide, uh, am I writing in the tent or should I stay here for which basically gives you the same time to decide, like, the DAO modules, right? If the package would upgrade, it would, you, it would basically happen for you. At least now you know that it's not going to happen. And it, doesn't, it doesn't happen silently, right? Which is the key. That you can also choose to now start to maintain if you want. Right. 
Sorry. Sure, Ron. Will, will this be a part of the packaging guidelines somehow, like what packages make sense to be packaged as one? Yes. That's what we're, yes. we're, we're trying to, basically, with, it's one of those things where you don't know what you don't know. Um, so, you know, we have guidelines, like there, there is docs there. It's just, we didn't know what things were missing until we ran into the problems to go right about them. Right, yeah, it, it's sort of binary, so have or not have docs, right, yeah. But yeah, this is exactly what, that, that was also the goal of this session, like to collect confusion and document them, maybe, or answer them. So, this is coming, that, that is the and if you don't see that, or if I describe it badly or something, just yell at me and we'll fix it. <laughs> well, we'll write it again, whether it's good or bad. We'll try to fix it. Okay, <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. I think, remember, there was uh, one other question which may fit into the discussion is uh, uh, the pattern of creating modules per minor version, basically. Is it a good or bad practice? What's the it depends on, on the package. Mm -hmm. so, um, mm -hmm. The purpose of the stream is to make it is to provide updates that remain that are remain compatible. If you have a project that uh, you know on H minor release, like say V8, changes its ABI, that needs to be a step as upstream. If you have a project like Node.js which only changes its ABI on a major release, then that should be upstream. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it is really going to depend on where the breakage occurs. And even if um, even in the case of uh, some of the IPA stuff. We had to talk a long while about the fact that um, this, uh, the CS, the, the dog tag that's built on, sometimes changes ABI in my releases and sometimes doesn't. So what we, yeah. we define that as you know 10.6 means 10.6 and forward until it's no longer uh, until the, until it's no longer uh, compatible, and then you know so 10.8 might be a new, uh, new stream because 10.6 and 10.7 were the same, but 10.8 and 10.8 didn't, and that was complicated. And that was mostly because they're terrible versioning. But like PHP. I'm sorry? Like yes. PHP. Right, like that. But you can basically decide if you create a Python 3 stream, or Python 3.7 stream, or Python 3.7.1 stream. Like, to how, like, how much do people care? Like, uh, all the upstream, basically, how, how, how do they break? And as Stephen says, like, you can have 3.5, 3.6, 3.7, 3.8, completely different. So you, you can create another stream. And they don't need to be. Yeah, use the best judgment or your knowledge of the thing that you're packaging, mm -hmm. and I, I think that's the best advice. I mean, for packages that don't have any kind of consistent uh, yeah, consistency whatsoever, uh, you probably want to go just a rolling stream and just acknowledge that it's mm -hmm. not going to get that, which is just telling your users we can't guarantee this is going to be compatible. Is it? And the streams don't. I'll get rid of The streams don't need to represent versions. We call them streams and versions for this reason because there are some kind of like streams updates that make sense. Yeah. And you can say these are backwards compatible or these make sense in this way. So like you can define streams as you need to. Um, I was just going to say, isn't the uh, DWM yeah. dev or whatever? There's one version of, of DWM that DWM has. Rolling, yeah. right? DWM has um, like four streams, three are versions, and the one is latest, which is like rolling. If you want to example, if you want to yeah. I wonder if we need to add some limitations like uh, on the policy level, so please don't create modules where we did commit or something. <laughs> because if, if, if we have to get that fine detailed, we will. Yeah. But I'd like to assume that most of the people who are at Packaging for Fedora have at least you know, been through kindergarten. <laughs> level of concept. Yeah, okay. Like we can but define all the roles in, the, like, in advance or just like maybe let something break and then fix it later. And also that goes to discussion like what Fedora is and how we should treat yeah. it. And like Fedora is not supposed to be broken, but like it's supposed to be doing innovations. So like when you're doing innovation, sometimes something breaks and if you fix it quick enough, that's good. I think. Right. I would also like to point out yet again that you know the guidelines and rules and all that stuff around RPM did not spring wholly from the mind of God at one point. <laughs> And then magically we're correct forever, right? Um, it took many, many years and many, many revisions and many people angry at FPC to, keep, to to make what we have today. Modules suffer some of that same stuff. We've learned some from from what we know about RPMs and how RPMs work. The problem space is actually smaller, um, so I think we can do a better job at the outset. But we need feedback. We need you know, people to make comments and, and recognize that we didn't think of everything up front, and so we need to document it if you see stuff. All right, I think we're running out of time. 
Um, just close with one other trick. Thanks for coming. And yeah, if you want to learn about packaging, stay here. If you want to contribute to, like, if you want to figure out how to fix some things modularity, there's the buff. I don't know when, but I think it's in Sunday. Um, so it's in the schedule. Thanks so much for coming.